Welcome back to another episode on my channel. Summer is almost over and the most beautiful season, at least in my opinion, begins. In autumn, many delicious fruits are finally ripe and ready to be eaten. Juicy apples, pears, grapes and tasty plums are waiting to be harvested. And plums will be the subject of today's episode. More precisely, it will be about the prune plum, a subspecies of the plum. Here in Germany we call them Zwetschgen or Quetsche. While out for a walk with my dog, I was able to spot some prune plum trees along the way. I grabbed a few plums and headed back home. But when I got there, about half of the plums I had harvested were missing. I cannot explain how that could happen. Really strange, but delicious. The prune plum is a droop and it has a more elongated and oval shape compared to the common plum. It is also less juicy. When sliced, a healthy, ripe and good tasting plum should look like this. Unfortunately, many of the plums I harvested looked like this inside. Not really appetizing. But what, or rather, who is to blame for their gross appearance, you ask? Well, I will show you that in a moment. But first, let's look at the skin and flesh of a plum under the microscope. Many consider the dusty white coating on the skin of the plum to be mold. Some even think it is pesticide residue. In fact, however, the coating is epicuticular wax, also called wax bloom. This coating protects the fruit from drying out, for example. The small white transparent crumbs you see here on the peel are parts of this protective coating. And here you can see the cells of the plum skin. They get their reddish color from natural pigments called anthocyanins, which we talked about in more detail in an earlier episode about red apples. Anthocyanins are not only healthy for us, but they also act as a kind of sunscreen for the fruit, protecting it from potentially harmful UVB rays. The cell walls of the skin are quite thick. This makes the skin tough, but at the same time it remains flexible and it needs to stay flexible, otherwise it would tear when the plum grows. The tasty part of the plum is the pulp, also called the mesocarp. The parenchymal cells of the pulp are filled with water, dissolved sugar and other ingredients. A plum is a very healthy snack. It contains calcium, iron, magnesium, potassium, zinc, vitamin A, C, E and B vitamins. Due to substances such as pectin and cellulose, it also promotes digestion. It is the parenchyma cells that make the plum so juicy. The cell walls are much thinner than those of the skin and you notice this immediately when you eat a plum. The skin is much tougher to chew than the flesh. The difference between the cells of the peel, which are stained red by the entothionins, and the parenchyma cells of the flesh is clearly visible here. But let's get back to those rather unappetizing looking plums. Why do they look like that? I examined the plums a little more carefully and at some point I came across this. Something is eating its way through the flesh here, but what the hell is that? Let's take a closer look. This voracious alien-like maggot 
is the larva of the fruit fly Drosophila suzuki, also called spotted wing Drosophila. And let me tell you right away, this species causes lots of trouble. Perhaps you have heard of their related species, the Drosophila melanogaster. This fruit fly is one of the best studied organisms in the world. But unlike Drosophila suzuki, it doesn't cause any problems. The spotted wing Drosophila originates from Asia. It was only discovered in the US in 2008. So we haven't been dealing with this pest for that long, but in the first year after its discovery, it caused over $500 million in economic damage to fruit crops. Today, that damage is actually much higher. The eggs of the fly are laid in ripening and ripe fruit. To do this, the female carves a hole in the intact skin of the fruit with her saw-like oviposita. She then lays up to three eggs in this hole. And from these eggs hatch these creatures that we can now observe fighting over the food. One female can lay 300 to 400 eggs in her lifetime. The larvae themselves hatch from their eggs after two days and then immediately begin to feed on the flesh of the fruit. Under optimal conditions, a generation cycle, meaning from larva to adult fly, takes only 10 days. Due to their rapid reproduction, they can therefore cause very large damage in a very short time. Irrespective of the damage caused by the feeding larvae inside the fruit, possible secondary infections caused by fungi or bacteria that were able to enter through the punctured skin of the fruit also lead to further crop losses. The spotted wing Drosophila prefers sweet cherries, but also plums, blueberries, raspberries and other thin-skinned fruits. With its mouth hooks, which are visible here, the larva can munch its way through the flesh very well. The little black arms on both sides are the anterior spiraculus. They allow air to enter its organism, especially when it has pupated. Theoretically, we could just eat the larvae along with the plums. They are not dangerous or poisonous for us. They even provide an extra portion of protein. But since I'm not beer grills, I prefer my fruit without an extra portion of protein. And that should be it for today. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the first beautiful days of autumn and I hope you will join me again on my next microscopic adventure. If you don't want to miss new episodes, feel free to subscribe to my channel. You can also find me on Instagram, the link to my page is in the video description. See you hopefully soon!